There are three sides to every story. Your side, my side, and the truth. And no one is lying. Memories shared serve each differently. There is something comforting about a true crime story with a conclusion. Solved true crime cases where the truth of what happened is clearly deduced by the police allows for the listener to feel safe. Even if something were to happen to them, the truth would find its way out. But sometimes, questions linger after the case is closed and put to rest. Like in the case of Shanquella Robinson, where authorities claimed she had passed away from intoxication despite her having her neck broken. People speculate and start to find holes in the agreed-upon narrative. Holes missed and discounted by the police, but end up turning the story into something much more. Though this kind of speculation and interest has shown to be problematic in certain cases, with people feeling justified and falsely accusing others of wrongdoing with little to no evidence, it has also led to some of the most notable cases of our time being solved, and that is clearly the case with the story we are about to cover today. Welcome back to another episode of Dreading, or if this is your first time here, Welcome. Today we are going to be covering the case of Chloe Ailing, a glamour model who was able to outwit two men that had planned to traffic her. Or at least, that is what she claimed she did. When the story was initially reported, many people found the case to be entirely unbelievable. It felt a bit too much like a movie, and not something that could happen in real life. As time went on, though, and more facts came out about the case, it would only get more confusing. In today's video, we are going to go over Chloe's story as she told it, and all the evidence that suggests she is correct. Then, we will go over all the details that were left out of her original telling. Details that only further complicate her narrative, that make people question her version of events. Which hopefully, can be used to form a more complete idea of what happened to this young woman, so you can come to your own conclusion. In 2017, Chloe Ailing was 20 years old and working as a model. She had signed with Phil Green's Supermodel Agency, which was an agency that was well known for sending their model out to any sort of job, regardless of what the job entailed. It didn't matter if you called in wanting models to compete in naked jello wrestling, or you wanted them for a high-end shoot. Phil only really cared if you were willing to pay, and what you did with the models he provided was your business. Chloe had been with the agency for a short amount of time, but had already begun to make a name for herself in the industry. After her first couple of shoots, brands began requesting her by name, which, due to the oversaturation in the market, was a feat that usually took years to accomplish. She had posed as a Page 3 glamour model multiple times, and with each new spread, she would gain more and more fans. Her Instagram feed was full of pictures of herself at these shoots, and at other shoots she had done in her own time. She curated her life beautifully, wanting to stay on top of the ever-growing social media marketplace. Nearly every day, there would be a new post, usually a selfie, making sure that her fans had a constant stream of content from her. By March of 2017, Chloe had garnered over 150,000 followers on Instagram and was quickly becoming one of Phil's most hotly pursued models, earning over 50,000 pounds a year in photo shoots alone. However, the intense spotlight had one incredibly significant drawback. Posting every aspect of your life online came with a price, and that was that everyone, even the most deranged of our society, knows everything. In March 2017, Phil received an email from an Italian photographer going by the name Andre Lazio. Phil was immediately skeptical of the email, having worked with nearly all the professionals in the area and never coming across Andre. However, he did his due diligence. He googled the name given and found proof of the photographer's work. He found a studio, a professional website, and a portfolio, and was able to find multiple brands who had seemingly worked with Andre. There were no red flags, and nothing to indicate that anything suspicious was going on. After these brief checks by Phil, he negotiated the deal with Andre. According to the emails exchanged between the two, he wanted Chloe for a motorbike shoot in Paris the coming month. He was adamant about her, and was willing to pay £900 up front to ensure that she would be the one coming to Paris. The day before the shoot, Chloe traveled to Paris. However, that shoot would never come to be. The morning after arrival, the photographer called and said his studio had been ransacked and the shoot was off. He was apologetic, assuring Phil that this was not like him and he hoped that they could work together in the future. Despite this hiccup, he seemed embarrassed, according to Phil, like this cancellation would ruin their future collaborative efforts, and he went the extra mile to make it up to the agency. The supposed photographer even went so far as to meet Chloe at her hotel to give her money for the expenses for the day, as a show of professionalism. Phil accepted the man's apology, and when he reached back out to try and reschedule the shoot, sending images of his new, safer studio in Milan, Italy, Phil thought nothing of it. In fact, Andre seemed more professional than some of the people he had worked with, willingly paying another 900 pounds up front for the shoot. 
they rescheduled the shoot for July 11th, this time agreeing that it would take place in Milan, and on July 10th, Chloe arrived at the Hotel Gallus, prepared for the day to come, but on July 11th, she would vanish without a trace. The first alarm bell was raised by Chloe's mom, who called Phil after not hearing from her daughter all day. Chloe still lived at home, and whenever she was traveling for work, she made it a habit to call her mother as often as possible, checking in throughout the day, before, during, and after the shoots, and keeping her apprised of the day's events. The fact that she hadn't checked in at all was strange, but knowing that she was in a whole other country added to her worry. Phil tried to calm her down and told her that everything would be fine. Andre seemed professional enough, and he trusted him with her daughter. After consoling Chloe's mom, he attempted to reach his client. He figured, at the most, she was screening her calls, and that she would pick up when he called. But she didn't. Her phone rang through to her voicemail, which was unusual for her, given how seriously she took modeling. He left a voicemail and followed up via text, asking her to contact him when possible. As time went on without Chloe returning his calls or messages, Phil began to get worried. She was one of his most professional clients. She was reliable and always on her phone. There was no way she had missed his messages, unless, Phil thought, her phone was on airplane mode. He had scheduled Chloe on a return flight the same day and hoped that she made the flight without issues. He called the airline hoping to hear that she made the flight back to the UK and was just having phone issues, but they informed him that she had not arrived and they had taken off without her present. As worried as Phil was, he still believed that Chloe was probably fine. She had done a professional shoot with an established photographer. He had the man's studio address, his picture, and knew exactly where they had been. If anything, the shoot ran long, and Andre had paid for Chloe to spend another night at the hotel. Maybe she had broken her phone during the shoot, or maybe she was blowing off steam, clubbing in another country. Whatever the reason, he believed she was probably fine. That is, until 10 a.m. the next morning when he received a ransom email in his inbox. The email read, We've got Chloe Ailing. We are Black Death Group. It is of supreme interest that you raise money. You should contact Dave Reed, Paul Baxendale Walker, and Rory McCarthy, or she will be sold at auction on Sunday and handed to the Russian Mafia. We require you to come up with an offer by Sunday, or she will be placed for auction. The men listed in the ransom note felt random, but they were all wealthy businessmen who Chloe had engaged with prior to her kidnapping. She had a friendly relationship with all of them, and it seemed likely to Phil that Chloe would have mentioned these men being able to pay her ransom to her kidnappers. After receiving the email, Phil immediately called Chloe's mom and told her to call the police, as well as the UK consulate in Milan. He gave them everything he had, the emails between Andre and himself, the address of the shoot, the website with Andre's portfolio, and more. The Italian police were dispatched to the address of Andre's apparent studio, but there was nothing there. The website had a fake address, and he had been able to put that address on Google, adding legitimacy to his name. Moreover, the police arrived at the fake studio address. They found some of Ailing's belongings, strung upon the ground, as if they had been dropped in a struggle. It was obvious what had happened. Chloe had come to the address for the photo shoot, carrying her clothing and possessions, and she had been attacked. Where she was now was anyone's guess. Simultaneously, the son received an emailed tip about the kidnapping. The police had just gotten involved with the email, written in broken English. It read, Did you know Chloe Ailing had been kidnapped in Italy and is now for sale by Russian Mafia? See attachment. It will be fucking hot, mate. Attached to the email was a screenshot of a page that was allegedly listed on the dark web. All our girls are set for auctions only and are being held in Europe. If you wish, we can kidnap a specific target for your needs. That service will be rather expensive, especially for targets outside of Europe. All the details, including age, name, nationality, and measurements, are in the girl's profile. We have a doctor contractor who tests the girls for the STDs and whether they are pure. Girl is only pure if the profile says so. We do not sell girls who are terminally ill, pregnant, have STDs, or are young mothers. Girls can be transported globally, and we have contractors for that, for a price. EU delivery is free, might take time dependent on current location, and drop-off point. Collection can be arranged. Auctions normally take place on Sunday and are normally within a week of capture. Merchandise that's sold is sold to make sure you check the section regularly to indicate interest. Always make sure you are on a genuine Black Death Group website. Girls in our pictures always have our logo. There are a lot of fake copies of our websites attempting to sell cheap girls using porn pictures or displaying no pictures at all. Always double check the email address as some fakers often hide other symbols, like I pretending to be L. We never changed our email addresses. Check contact section. Best practice is to always type email rather than copying. Fake websites ask for payment to take part in the auction. You know that is not the case and we never charged a deposit for just the 
the auction. We also don't let new people in. Only good recommended custom generates profits. In order to take part in an auction, you need to contact us and indicate which girl or girls you're interested. You will then be provided with the link to the auction. You know the drill, or should this be your first auction, you will have to be able to prove you know someone who previously dealt with us. You will then be briefed about the process. This service is strict for the recommended people only. We do not sell girls to anyone who is not aware of the rules. New people only come, ask too many questions, and are generally time wasters. Chloe, born in the UK, abducted in Italy, held in Germany. 19 years old, Caucasian, 34 double D, 25, 35. Beginner model. Starting bid, $300,000. Auction takes place July 16th, 2017. Shortly after the police found Chloe's discarded clothes, another email came in, once again sent to Phil and the police, with a picture attached. The picture showed a drugged and despondent Chloe laying on the ground with a small piece of paper on her body. The paper includes an image that is synonymous with the Black Death Gang, and included emails to contact those who seemingly belong to the gang. The story gained international attention, with people horrified at how a successful professional model could vanish without a trace. For six days, the world searched for Chloe, fearing the worst had happened to her. But on July 17th, Chloe would walk into the Milan consulate completely unharmed along with her kidnapper, which led the world to question what had happened to her. After arriving at the consulate in Milan, her kidnapper was arrested, and the police questioned Chloe as to what occurred. Her kidnapper, a man who was allegedly a high member in a human trafficking ring, had walked in, hand in hand, with her to get arrested, and from the outset, the situation seemed strange. Chloe told the police that when she arrived at the photo shoot, she had been ambushed by two men wearing black balaclavas, who held her down, drugged her with ketamine, and forced her into a duffel bag. Her mouth was taped and her wrists were handcuffed to her ankles. She was then placed in a car and driven for an unknown amount of time. Because of the ketamine, she had a hard time understanding where she was, but when they finally arrived at their final location, the drugs had worn off. Chloe, still in the duffel bag, was brought into a small home, and it was there she met her captors. The man who claimed to be a professional photographer was Lucas Herba, and he informed the model that he was the leader of the Black Death Gang. He told her that he had been watching her for weeks at that point, and that their ultimate plan was to sell her on the black market as a sex slave. Lucas then told the 20-year-old model about what had happened to the past victims of theirs. He claimed that one of their kidnapping victims was sold to a family who all took turns having sex with her before feeding her to their pet tiger. He told her how they had sexually abused hundreds of women and how she was just the next on their list. Lucas informed her that he, alongside his partner, his brother, Mikhail Herba, had made millions over the years in sex trafficking, that they had help from the police and various government agencies, and that unless she was able to get them 300,000 pounds by the end of the week, she was to be sold to the highest bidder. Chloe told the brothers that her family couldn't pay the ransom. She knew three men who could, and gave out the names of the wealthy businessmen who had been listed in the original email. However, there was one thing the brothers had encountered on, and that was the fact that Chloe was a mother. Two years earlier, Chloe had given birth to a son, and according to the Black Death's own guidelines about abductions, as seen in the email to the son, they did not sell girls who are, quote, terminally ill, pregnant, have STDs, or are young mothers. For some reason, this notorious black market crime syndicate, who had no issue with trafficking children to sex slavery, drew the line at trafficking women who were close to death and had children. Chloe pleaded with the brothers to let her go, that she needed to go back home to see her son, and begged them at the very least to let her see a picture of him one last time. But the moment she mentioned that she had a child at home, her kidnappers seemed shocked. Through their weeks of monitoring and studying her, preparing for her eventual kidnapping, they had apparently missed the numerous Instagram posts with her child or her taking care of her son at her mom's house. They informed her of their weird guidelines, how they wouldn't be able to sell her any longer now that they knew she had a child, and proceeded to handcuff Chloe to a chest of drawers in the home, forcing her to sleep on the cold floor. They didn't know what exactly they were going to do with her or how they were going to move forward, but it appeared that the men didn't care about that too much. By the second day, their entire kidnapping plan had fallen apart, and according to Chloe's statements, she began to talk to Lucas and try to get him on her side. Neither of the brothers seemed to be particularly busy, despite running what they claimed to be a worldwide sex trafficking gang. She was often left alone with Lucas the most. Chloe would talk to him, asking about his life and interests, and express interest in him personally. She would go on to state that she was trying to get him to fall in love with her. After some conversation, Lucas appeared to fall for Chloe, and made multiple sexual suggestions to the model. According to statements she would give to the police, 
police, multiple morning shows, as well as Dr. Phil, the leader of the Black Death, asked her if they could be intimate, to which she replied, if you release me, then something can happen, but otherwise, no. As directly after this encounter, she claimed he told her to go shower, as he was sexually frustrated. By the second night, Chloe was still handcuffed, but now sleeping in Lucas's bed. But, according to Chloe, Herba, and the physical examination she underwent, the two never had sex. After sleeping in the same bed as her captor, Chloe was then completely unshackled and allowed to roam about the small farmhouse near Turin as she wished. But according to her statements to the police, for the next few days, she was not allowed to eat. She would later amend this statement, claiming that the pair hadn't starved her while she was in their care. Lucas brought her chocolates, clothing, and surprised her with multiple gifts, and for the promise of sex, potentially, after she was released. Chloe stated that though she was allowed to roam the home as she wished, she believed both the brothers were criminals, and that if she were to make a break for it and try to get help, they would have her recaptured and she would be killed. Chloe told the police that she stayed in the home for the duration of the kidnapping, until she was able to convince Lucas to take her to the UK consulate and release her. She told Lucas that if he released her, she wouldn't tell a soul what happened, and she would personally pay the ransom. Not only that, she would meet up with him afterwards and they could finally be together. Lucas, according to Chloe, jumped at the offer and quickly agreed to let her go. He went once again asserted that he was a major crime boss who had agents everywhere, and that if she didn't pay him the money that she owed him, that he would have her killed. The pair then drove three hours to the UK consulate. Chloe was able to speak to the police, and Lucas was promptly arrested for her kidnapping. The story was harrowing, but also incredibly strange. How had these two men, who had supposedly kidnapped and trafficked hundreds of women, had missed the fact that Ailing was a new mom? What kind of sex trafficking ring that kidnapped and sold children has a moral code against mothers? Who had emailed the son about Chloe's kidnapping prior to it being reported? Why had the captors immediately emailed offering her to be brought back by her agent? It didn't make sense, but that was just the beginning. Immediately after being released by her kidnappers, Chloe was examined by medical professionals. Her body was photographed and checked, but what they found was shocking. Despite living through a horrific kidnapping, she was fine. There had been no drugs in her system, and the only indicator that she had been drugged was a small needle mark on her arm, and ketamine was found when they ran a test on her hair. However, there was no way to see when the drug had entered her system, meaning it was possible that she had taken ketamine before the attack, recreationally. Similarly, she had no injuries. She hadn't been beaten or bruised. She hadn't been sexually attacked. She was, by all appearances, completely fine. Four weeks after being kidnapped, Chloe was finally allowed to return home to the UK, and immediately after arrival, held a press conference in front of her mother's home. Chloe had set the press conference up herself, wanting to speak out after her terrifying ordeal, but this only served to confuse the public more. Chloe Ailing is now safely back in Britain after this ordeal, although she did stay for four weeks in Italy in the end. She spoke outside her mother's home south of London. Uh, she spent today being briefed by UK police and debriefing with the Foreign Office here, but not before posing for photos with local newspaper photographers and speaking to the Italian television press. I've been through a terrifying experience. I feared for my life second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour. I am incredibly grateful to the Italian and UK authorities for all they have done to secure my safe release. Now, Chloe claims that she was lured to Milan with the offer of a model contract only to be assaulted, drugged, handcuffed, stuffed in a suitcase and driven out into the countryside where she was held for six days handcuffed to a chest of drawers. But some of her friends are now speaking to the media saying that they that she has told them that she was actually taken shoe shopping, albeit un, under duress because she'd lost her shoes. Her lawyer has admitted that that had happened. And they've also uh, telling, the, uh, telling the British press here that uh, Chloe had met her supposed abductor, 30-year-old Lucas Herber, in Paris a couple of months before. Now, Italian police are now saying that he is somewhat of a fantasist and they are unsure whether the gang that he says he belongs to, uh, the Black Death Gang, even exists. So investigations on a multiple of fronts underway right now in Italy, here in Britain and also in Poland where this Lucas Herbert was from. Police are believed to be hunting his brother.
Chloe appeared incredibly normal and borderline pleased with what had happened. She played with her family's dogs, smiled when posing for pictures, and when discussing what had happened to her, her voice was completely unaffected, as if being kidnapped wasn't a huge ordeal. People respond to trauma differently, but her response was so unusual, people began to feel as if something was deeply amiss with her story. And that was seemingly confirmed when CCTV footage showed that in the days Chloe had been kidnapped, she had seemingly gone on multiple dates with her alleged kidnapper. The footage shows Chloe walking hand in hand through the village streets with Lucas, something she had originally not told the cops about. In her original statements, she had claimed that she wasn't allowed outside and that the brothers told her that if she left, she would be killed. But that wasn't all. In the small village where the brothers resided, Chloe had been seen a number of times the week she had gone missing and never once appeared to be in distress. It was revealed that Lucas had taken her shoe shopping her second day with them, replacing her shoes which she had left at the kidnapping scene. Following that, he took her out to lunch where multiple eyewitnesses reported the pair laughing and holding hands. They were notable, said one witness, because in the small village, everyone knew each other, and nobody knew who she was. It was also revealed that Chloe had been Facebook friends with Lucas, years prior to the kidnapping. Though there was no evidence the pair ever talked privately, the fact that Lucas had known about Chloe for years at that point, and had been following her online for some time, made the entire ordeal completely unbelievable to the UK public. What was also unbelievable was the fact that when Chloe and Lucas originally went to the UK consulate, they arrived a bit too early. The consulate was set to be opening in the coming hours, and instead of dropping his kidnapping victim off, then making his grand escape, the pair went into a cafe up the street and ate breakfast together. Once more, eyewitnesses said the pair were congenial and happy, and Chloe showed absolutely no signs of distress. After Chloe dropped Phil Green as her agent, he released a more damning part of the email he received from her kidnappers, a part that previously had been undisclosed. After giving Phil the names of three wealthy businessmen who could potentially pay for Chloe's release, the kidnappers wrote, I am sure that this experience, properly exposed to the media, will kickstart her career, and that she will be very comfortable giving the money back. The very idea that the leader of a crime organization would release one of their victims and coach them how to use the kidnapping to bolster their career, all while drawing attention to the crime gang, was and still is incredibly absurd. The majority of people didn't believe that Chloe had been kidnapped, and instead believed that her kidnapping had been a less than clever orchestrated attempt to gain publicity and fame. And when McCall Herba was arrested, the public's theory was validated. Michael directly stated that Chloe had planned the false kidnapping with his brother, who was in love with Chloe. McCall claimed that Chloe wanted to be a serious international model, but was being held back by her talent agency. She needed more press and she needed to look as good as possible. It was only after talking to Lucas, whom McCall stated was in love with Chloe and willing to do anything for her, that she decided to fake a kidnapping. Both Lucas and McCall stated in the original email, which was sent to Phil Green, was partially written by Chloe. The email to the son with the black death ad was also sent by her, McCall claimed, and was done in order to get more eyes on the case. As the investigation into the case continued, a separate investigation was launched into the black death group, and it was found that the majority of posts on the dark web said to be done by the Black Death were in fact fake. How many actual members of this gang, or if the gang actually existed, was undetermined, making Chloe's story even less believable. In court, Lucas stated that he kidnapped Chloe, not because he was part of a human trafficking organization or because she wanted to gain publicity. Instead, he stated that he had watched the movie by any means and was inspired by the plot. The following is the movie's synopsis, as found on IMDb. A C-list celebrity gets kidnapped and held hostage after a nightclub appearance. When the police interrogate the man she accuses, they question whether she's after justice or a front-page story. Lucas stated that he was the one who wanted to help Chloe's career by faking a kidnapping, and he had sincerely drugged and kidnapped her and led her to believe that he was a crime boss. The reason that her story didn't make sense wasn't because she was lying or because it hadn't happened, but rather everything did happen, but Chloe didn't notice the glaring issues that went along with his story, and believed she was genuinely outsmarting him. On June 11, 2018, Lucas and McCall were convicted of kidnapping and sentenced to 16 years and 9 months in prison. However, in March of 2021, McCall's sentence was lowered from 16 years to 5 after his sentence was downgraded from kidnapping for extortion purposes to simply kidnapping. Chloe would state that the convictions proved her story was true. The officials had gone through the evidence and her story held water. However, others believed 
that the Italian justice system didn't properly look into the crimes, and if the case had gone to court in the UK, Chloe would have been charged as a co-conspirator. But I leave the question up to you. What do you think happened? Do you think the brothers plotted to kidnap Chloe to sell her on the black market? Do you think she worked with Lucas to increase her profile? Or do you think that Lucas planned this on his own and accidentally roped his brother into it? Let me know in the comments down below. Once more, if there is a video you would like to see on this channel, or a case you would like to bring more attention to, email me at dreading.official at gmail.com. Have a great rest of your day, and remember to stay safe.